you're unhappy because you're not living in your authenticity. Grand rising, beautiful kings and queens, and welcome to the Loving Yourself Unconditionally Beyond Abuse podcast. You're unhappy because you're not living in your authenticity. What do I mean by that? Of course, y'all know with everything that's going on, the whole little Nas X video got the world in an uproar, right? Like, you know, and I think that the media and the industry, they love to trigger people to fight against each other. I'm right, you're wrong. You know, my beliefs are correct. Your beliefs are wrong. Like we are constantly in this war with, well, those who are not happy, okay? Because truly happy people, they know that the journey is just that, it's a journey, you know? And we are here to be an inspiration to other people. We're not here to condemn or judge other people. We're here. If you feel that Nas X is living a life contradictory to what you believe, then it's up to you to be the inspiration for that person. And you don't inspire people by condemning them or judging them. You can't inspire people like that. How you inspire people by loving them exactly as they are, not needing it to be anything else. And you know, I, I uh, I've been guilty of being selfish and needing to or loving someone based on what they um, could do for me or who they were in my life or if they were following my rules, my guidelines. That's not love. That's not how God loves us. You know, I, I had to think I was on the lake the other day. It was a beautiful day here in North Carolina. I think it was uh, Friday. Yeah, I went Friday when Aaliyah was in school and I was on the lake and I was thinking, you know, we, we have betrayed God. We have lied to God. We have cheated on God. We have sold our soul to the devil. We have listened more to the outside voices instead of listen to, listening to the guidance of our own soul. So who are we to throw stones at Lil Nas X? You know, yeah, you may not agree with his lifestyle and the choices that he makes, but that's his life to live. The only thing that you can do and send your love, your light, and healing to his heart if you think that he's doing something wrong. If you think that what he's doing is wrong. I'm not saying that it's right. What I'm saying is that we are all here on our own individual journeys. And we cannot dictate what someone else needed to learn or what someone else came here to learn on their own journey. It's my belief that we all had, we all spoke to God and said, this is what, this is the life that we want to live. These are the experiences that we want to have in this life. Because these are the experiences that are going to teach us going forward. So how can we try to interrupt this man's learning? We're interrupting his learning by trying to get him to be something that's not authentic to him. Because who, who are you to say that that's not authentic to his soul? We don't know that. Everybody has their own soul's path. You know, people are not changed by our words. They're changed by our actions, by our love for them. Regardless of how, you know, you know, I, yeah, I used to stick around, right, where people mistreated me, right, staying in their influence, you know, staying in, or in their circle, but now I know I can love people from a distance, <laughs> like, I can love you from a distance, but I know that you cannot be in my inner most peaceful place my sacred place, you know, because even though I don't agree with your actions and how you treat people, because if you're willing to treat me like that, then I'm, I know that you're treating other people like that. So 
it doesn't mean that I agree with how you treat people, you know, but I'm not going to allow you to treat me like that anymore. I'm not going to allow myself to be treated like that anymore. So, you know, and I can remember a time when I allowed all the voices of society, culture, and my family to drown out the inner voice of my soul. You see, we all have that inner guidance, you know, and a lot of us, a lot of us, it, uh, we, we ignore it. <laughs> we say, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to hear this right now. I want to do this. I want to go this path. I want to see what this path is like. So how do we know that Nas wasn't having that war within his own soul? I had it within my own soul. No, I'm not gay. Have I experienced gay? Yes, I have had gay experiences or homosexual experiences. But the more that I learn to love myself and become my authentic self, I realized, hey, this is just my masculine energy, the masculine energy within me. And I learned to love that energy within myself instead of trying to suppress it. See, it's my belief that because all of our men, all of our little boys were told to suppress their emotions, suppress their feelings. They thought something was wrong with them. So now that they're no longer fearful of expressing their emotions and feelings, most of them are choosing to go down this path, never knowing that it's all about a balance. It's all about us becoming balanced in both of our energies and being with another soul that's in balance as well. You know, another soul that whether they're masculine physically, they know how to balance. They know how to balance their energies. They're not too much in the feminine. They're not too much in the masculine. It's an equal balance. And that's what life is about. But you cannot effectively find that balance within yourself until you have had experiences. So most of us are living in one most of us are living our lives unbalanced and that makes us unhappy because we're not truly thriving as being our authentic selves. You know, yeah, I may not be swinging down the pole to hell, you know, but I understand where that video is coming from, you know, because I found myself in relationships, jobs, friendships, and a legal situation because I was following the guidance of everyone else and not myself. My, kept, my soul kept trying to push me, kept trying to show me the way, and I kept running. I would spend a few years trying to, you know, trying to heal and then it would get too hard and then I would go back to what I was used to, you know? But then I met an angel in 2015, a guide on this journey. And that one interaction awoke my soul to something different, to no longer playing small, because I, I am a creator. God put me here. I came here to create. I came here to use my gifts and talents in the best way, in the, in the way that feels authentic to my soul. And, and hell, I might have some people talking about me once they see my tap videos, you know, but I have to live the life that's authentic to my soul, you know, and, and really it's a form of, artistic creativity and so many of us take it we, we 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 take it out of context we take it out of we blow it out of proportion is it serious absolutely i mean 
Anytime you're talking about the devil and God, it's a serious thing. But what I've learned is that it doesn't exist outside of us. And that's my opinion. That's what I believe. And so, yes, that's contradictory to what I grew up in. So I am an outcast now. Because no, I do know, I no longer support everything that's in that Bible. I don't. And let me tell you why. Because I'm listening to the inner voice, which is God within me, the Holy Spirit within me. The Bible is a great resource. It's a great tool. But so are other writings. So are other books. It's so, it's so vast out here with so much knowledge. And then once you get to studying and looking at other cultures and religions, it opens your mind to say, hey, you know what? It's not about doing everything right and by the book. Because there is no right or wrong. It only creates positive and negative in our lives. So our actions, whatever action we choose to take, is going to create a positive effect in our life or a negative effect in our life. So if we choose to to steal from other people and 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 and, and lead other people to practicing things that are against their soul, that person will be held accountable. You don't have to worry about that person. That person will be held accountable just like you will be held accountable. So instead of worrying about what someone else is doing, make sure that you are doing what's, what your soul is calling you to do and then be that inspiration for other people. You know, once that, that guy awoke me in 2015, I left everyone and everything. And I began to follow the guidance of my soul. And no matter what was going on around me, I knew I was anchored in the love of the universe. It didn't happen until later because I, even though I still believe that I was anchored, I still was more focused on my outside situation. I still was more focused on the lack of money in my bank account, that my rent was not paid, that, you know, everything external to me, instead of focusing on and knowing that that the universe, God was guiding me to my best and greatest life, to my most authentic life. And the greatest inspiration that I will ever have is over my own children. Nobody, nobody matters on the outside of me. It doesn't matter that, you know, my, my, um, my audience is more on TikTok than it is on these other social media platforms. It doesn't matter that more people give me comments there. What matters is I am inspiring more people on that application. but my greatest inspiration will always be my daughter. So no, we'll talk about Lil Nas X. We'll have that conversation and I'll get her, her opinion on it and how she feels and how it makes her feel on the inside because that's what we are supposed to do. We can't get condemn and, and, and tell other people not to be themselves because we don't like it. Because we think our children will be greatly impacted and influenced by it. It's up to us to talk to our children. To have conversations about this stuff with our children. It's about us being emotionally available and vulnerable to our children about these situations. About our feelings. So that they can know that it's safe. It's okay for them to discuss their feelings too. You know, you can preach it all day. But if you're not living the lifestyle, then you shouldn't be condemning other people for living their own truth. You know, I don't fake my lifestyle. I share my struggles. 
I share my truth and who I am authentic, authentic, who I am authentically with others. I, I, I freely share my mistakes because I know that I'm not perfect. But I also know that I don't need a, a Bible verse to tell me how to live my life when the Holy Spirit is living and thriving within me and guiding me every step of the way. And that's why I decided to surrender my soul to that guidance. Now, if little Nas X chose to surrender his soul to the devil, then he will be held accountable for that. If that's what you feel, he will be held accountable. I'll be, be held accountable for surrendering my soul to the guidance of my soul. Because what, what if that wasn't correct? But I feel 100% that that's what's, that this life that I'm living now is authentic to me and nobody else. And maybe that's how Lil Nas sees it too. Maybe he sees that he's living the life that's most authentic to him. And see, yeah, we might see all these people commenting and, 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 and all this other stuff. But just like Buddha, Jesus, and Mohammed, you have your own following. Because people are going to resonate with that. Some people are going to resonate with me and, and, and living, loving yourself unconditionally beyond abuse. Who still have symptoms of PTSD, bipolar disorder, anxiety, depression. Well, I no longer have anxiety and I no longer have depressed days. You know, like I know that when, when triggers arise, it's for me to go within and love my little girl, to love my little Yanni. No, nobody has power outside of us. Nobody. We have, we, we have, we have the power and it, it, it's up to us, you know, I heard someone say the other day, it's, a, it's our job to raise our children, not the news, not the music industry or television. So don't get mad if you are one of those parents that just send your children off to do their own thing and, and, and never talk to your children and never do anything with your children. And then you get mad when they're listening to this music that you sent them off to listen to. And now they're, now they're, they're walking around like little Nas. <laughs> it's up to us. It's so easy for us to point the finger at somebody else. But what are you doing? What are you doing in your household? How are you being an inspiration to the people around you? It's easy for you to talk about somebody else and somebody else's demons and what somebody else is doing wrong. What are you doing? What are you doing wrong? Have you checked yourself lately? It's your job to be emotional, emotionally available and vulnerable to your children and sit down and have discussions about this. But so many of us are afraid to talk to our children about things that are going on in this world. We want to hide them. We want to shield them. We want to suppress their emotions. And that's not healthy. We want to abuse them and condition their mind into believing things that are contradictory to their soul's growth. You know, our men were manipulated into believing that if they shared their emotions, that they were girls. If they shared their feelings and they must be a girl. And y'all wonder why we have all of these men that have all of a sudden come out and now they're gay. We didn't allow them to be themselves fully and completely when they were angry when we didn't allow them to express their emotions when they wanted to cry we didn't allow them to express their emotions and now someone comes out 
and does that. And now we have our men thinking that that's what they're supposed to be, right? Because we never taught them that it's okay. That just because you feel your feminine energies does not mean that you are feminine. It does not mean that you are gay. It means that you are a human being who shares a masculine and a feminine energy. When I'm angry and stressed and ambitious and productive, that's my masculine energy. When I am free and lazy and, <laughs> and goofy and childlike, that's more of my feminine energy. But I learned how to balance them both. I learned to become both comfortable in them both. And so of course, when I get around a masculine man, I know how to be in my feminine energy. Or when I'm around a more feminine man, I know how to be around, I know how to be in my masculine energy. Now, if we come, if we balance those, we live a healthy, happy, and holistic life. But see, most of us are not honoring both. We're not honoring both and we need to be able to do that. And then when, you, when you're when you living in that life, you are living and you know like, oh my goodness, this life feels very authentic to me. This feels like the life I was meant to live. And yes, I'm single. And that feels authentic to me because before I used to like focus on like the physical aspect of the relationship, right? And now I'm learning how because I have that relationship with spirit. I have that relationship with God, universe, whatever you want to call it. I call it God. I call it universe. I call it spirit. I call it everything. I call it mother earth, whatever. Now that I have that deep relationship with spirit and myself, I realize, you know what? It's great to have the physical connection, but it, but it also serves us greater when we have that spiritual connection. And that's what relationships are about. They're about having that spiritual connection with the other person. Because then life is more blissful. And then you're living a balanced life. You know, it's not a perfect life at all. But you are more aware of your surroundings because you're more aware of yourself. You know, that video has a lot of symbolism. And I see it as little Nas X saying, hey, if I need to go to hell to live as my authentic self, then I'll go. And I'll make love to the devil while I'm there. You see, when you live a life that's authentic to your soul, it will appear blasphemous to society. You know, I know that I appear blasphemous to society. Because no, I don't support Christianity because Jesus wasn't a Christian. Jesus was a messenger of love, a guide, a teacher of love. So was Buddha, so was Muhammad. They weren't Buddhist. They weren't Muslim. That may have been their region. The region where they lived mostly supported that but Jesus didn't come into this world to be a Christian he came here to be a teacher and a guide to the the way of love and that's why he sat with prostitutes and that's why he sat with these and that's why he sat with uh sinners because he was trying to show them that you can live a healthy happy and holistic life when you surrender your will to the will of the universe, to the will of the guidance that's within you. He didn't come here saying, uh, come and be baptized in the spirit of Christianity. He said, lay down your life so that I can give you life, so that you can live an authentic life to your soul. 
He didn't come here and say, lay down so you can become a Christian. Same thing with Buddha. Buddha said love. He didn't say go be a, a Buddhist. There's a meme that circulates on IG that says, religion is for people who are afraid of hell. They're afraid of going to hell. Spirituality is for people who have already been to hell and have survived. So, you know, when you, when you hit that rock bottom, you have nowhere else to go. That's hell. That's hell. I know it was hell for me. I was living in someone else's life for 40 fucking years. 40 years. I live my life based off of cultural conditioning. The labels of society. And everybody else's voice instead of trusting my inner guidance. And now at the age of 46, I am finally living my authentic life. And I'll give up all this shit again and hit rock bottom again and come back up with God. Because guess what? I get to be me. I get to be who I am, who I came here to be. I get to inspire the people I came to inspire with my story. Who am I to judge the journey of little Nas X? And who am I to condemn what he choose to practice? No, Jesus didn't go to those people and say, this is what you need to do. This is what you should do. Jesus led that life and people felt his energy and said, Jesus, what do I need to do? So if you want to convince people to change, then change your own damn lifestyle. Change how you talk about people. Change how you view people. Our only purpose on this earth is to love others and to be an inspiration to others. And my, my duty, my calling is to show other people who experience symptoms of PTSD, bipolar disorder, ADHD, depression, panic attacks, anxiety, and addictions that you can let go of all of that. And you can live a life of bliss and happiness and healthiness and being holistic in every area of your life, no matter what your bank account looks like. No matter whether you have a partner in your life, someone to share your life with. Cause I do have somebody to share my life with. I got my daughter. We about to go on vacation. Be thankful and grateful for what you have in your life now. Stop worrying about the diagnosis. Stop worrying about what other people think. Stop worrying about everything else and just start living your life. We all came here to experience life as God, as the spirit of God walking, living within us. And we all agreed on that experience before we even were birthed into this existence. We have to stop trying to make other people conform to our individual beliefs. And we must start living our beliefs. And then the people who are attracted to your light will gravitate towards you. And everybody is not here to be attracted to your light and gravitate towards it.
there are no wrong paths on this life or wrong turns. You needed those experiences to teach you so that you could learn who you are, what you like, what saddens you, what, what angers you. And you wouldn't have that knowledge and wisdom to share it with other people in the form of your story. We cannot change people. We can only change how we deal with people. And we need to stop trying to interrupt other people's experiences and how they're supposed to live their lives based upon our own selfish opinions and our own selfish thoughts. Let them people live their lives. We're all gonna be held accountable. We're not gods, we're guides. And we're not here to judge anybody else. We're here to lead other people. To show them their authentic self, their unique self. And if that is contradictory to what your life looks like, so be it. But at least you help them find their way. At least you gave them the guidance because they may not have been aware or awoke enough to listen to their own soul, but they will get there. You know, if you truly believe in the word of God and you love God the way that you say you do, you know the importance of speaking negatively over people, situations. And so when someone does something that you don't like or that you don't agree with, you don't condemn that person. You don't judge that person. You go within. You know why? Because a lot of the things that we don't like outside of us is because we don't like it inside of ourselves. We got to learn how to love it within ourselves first. So ask yourself, what triggered, what, what emotions in you did that video trigger? Did it trigger your own fears about heaven and hell? Did it trigger your own fears about homosexuality? Did it trigger your own fear, fears about the devil? And who the devil really is? And instead of condemning him and judging him, send prayers of love and light and healing to his heart. If you think that what he is doing is wrong. No, you may not agree with people being homosexual, people being in polygamous relationships, you know, and what I had to find out is that I had to go within my soul to figure out what, what it is that I wanted, what it is that I like because I didn't know. Yes, I had same sex, you know, uh, experiences. But I know what I, but I know that that was a lot of me attention seeking and, and thinking that I wasn't cheating on anybody. Right. If I was with a girl. But then I had to come to love my own past and love my own spirit and listen to the guidance of my soul and knowing what I enjoy. The type of energy that I want in my life. The, the type of physical appearance, appearance I want in my life. And you know, I talk to God. God knows what I want. 
because yes, God knows that I like the physical aspect of, of a man. <laughs> and that I would cheat if I was with a woman. <laughs> because no, it's not all of, it's not always about sex for me. It's not. But when I have that person in my life and I'm loving on that person and we're having an amazing time together, I do. I want to share that sexual experience with that one person. And I, I prefer penetration <laughs> with a real dick, <laughs> not a dildo. I enjoy suck I enjoy kissing that part of a man I do it turns me on to please my significant other <laughs> like I receive enjoyment from doing it so I, I and I, I mean I know that that's what I like to do like I don't really like the taste of vagina I mean, yeah, my own on his lips, but like, like, no, I prefer, I prefer that, you know, and that's what it really, what it's all about is, is coming to be aware of yourself, your, your own desires to know yourself. And then when you love and know yourself, guess what happens? The most amazing thing happens. You don't go around judging and condemning other people. And when you do find yourself in that space, you, you, you check yourself. Like, why, why am I jealous of that person? Why am I condemning that person? Like, why, why am I doing that? Check myself. What's in me that I don't like, or that I wish I was more of in that other person, because that's really the only reason why you don't like somebody. Is because they're, they have something in them that you wish you had in you. So instead of condemning that person or judging that person, how about learning from that person? How about that? So I'm done. If you, if you, if you truly desire to change the heart of another individual, try loving them the way that God loves you. because none of us are better than anyone. And we all have fallen short. We all have fallen short. We all have made mistakes. We all have lied. We all have cheated. We all have betrayed. We all have been toxic. So check yourself, check yourself first. If you enjoy learning about this, this topic today. I have a free private community beginning April 12th, where I teach other practical ways to love yourself unconditionally beyond abuse. Um, and just to become more aware of yourself and to love yourself, therefore you can love other people and, and know that someone else's lifestyle has nothing to do with you. Has nothing to do with you. You pray for people and allow people to live their own damn lives knowing that they will, they will be held accountable for their actions. Like you don't have to revenge people. You don't have to, you don't have to shit on people. Karma gonna shit on people. Karma gonna shit on people for how they treated you. Karma's gonna shit on people for how they led, they led their lives. They, they influence people in the wrong way. You don't have to worry about that. People are going to be held accountable for every action that they have taken against you and other people on this earth. That's why it's, it's so important for you to focus on you and your love and, and are you loving people? And if need be loving them from a distance because they don't belong in your innermost energy bubble because they come as a liability and not as an asset. That's up to you what you allow in. You don't have to allow Lil Nas X video into your life, into your family sphere, sphere of influence. I get it. They might, they might see it other out 
you know, in other ways, but that's why that's your job to talk to your kids. Make sure they are aware of their own emotions, their own feelings about the situation. And that they're not taking your words, that they really are searching within themselves at a young age to see how they feel about it, you know? So if you're ready to just learn practical ways on how you can love yourself unconditionally, join the free private uh, Facebook community. And you, uh, you can do that by subscribing to the monthly lose letter. You'll receive your discount and your access code uh, in, a, in the thank you um, response. Your discount code is for you to download your materials and then the access code is for you to uh, join the Facebook group. So, but if you've already started loving yourself unconditionally, but you still still feel that you're stuck in some areas, like you're still judging people or you're still condemning people or you still are, are not really genuinely feeling like your authentic self, then I have a, a, a deeper supportive members only community that you can join. And you can do that by registering at Suzy Suttles uh, dot com. So, you know, I just want to see everybody win in life and love this year. I think we've all been through enough. We've all had tough times. I think it's time for us to just really dive into loving ourselves unconditionally so that we can raise the vibration of our planet in every single area and learn to love other people as they are, not who we want them to be. Okay. And, um, you know, guys, we know that a mother's touch is my baby. That's my community organization where I assist other men and women um, financially who are leaving domestic violence uh, relationships and are having a hard time financially. And I also <clears throat> created the community to provide loving support and mentoring for any person who desires to live a healthy, happy, and holistic life with a mental barrier. And the whole purpose of the Loving Yourself Unconditionally Beyond Abuse Facebook community and A Mother's Touch Inc. is created based on the desire to be who I needed. Excuse me, when I found myself struggling financially after leaving my own unhealthy and abusive relationship. The organization is a proud collaborator with community organizations whose mission is assisting families and co-parents with becoming the healthiest and truest version of themselves. Healthy adults raise healthy, happy, and holistic children who have a healthy love of themselves and others. If you are someone you know is in need of financial assistance, or if you are interested in donating, please visit www.amotherstouchinc.org to fill out the financial assistance form or to make a donation. All donations are greatly accepted and appreciated. And the, we have come to the end of the program. If you guys are listening on Anchor, Pocket Cast, Breaker, Google, um, Google Podcast, Spotify, there's one more. Oh my goodness, I just looked at it. I'm on six platforms, but you can find them on Anchor if you go to Anchor or if you go to Spotify. Um, but Anchor shows them all. I'll get that last one, but there's six. I'm on six platforms. So make sure you guys share it for anyone you think may benefit. If you are watching on YouTube, I encourage you to like, put some comments in here. What are your thoughts about the whole little Nas X videos? Let me know. I'm, I'm always down for listening to other people's comments, opinions. Doesn't mean that I'll, you know, take them on for myself because I have my own beliefs, but I want to hear what y'all think. Um, share it if you think someone may benefit from it and subscribe to the channel and then hit the bell for notifications because I release a video every single day. So let's go ahead and get y'all out of here with a prayer of love to the universe. Dear universe, I love you. I love you. And the most beautiful thing about having a relationship with you is that every day that I spend with you by myself, with you alone, it opens my eyes to something new. It opens my eyes to something new. And it is so easy for us to, to point our fingers and judge another person's journey, their story. But we haven't even come to the depths of our own journey. We haven't even dived deep enough within ourselves to see who we truly are. 
So it's easier for us to condemn and judge other people when we haven't even done the work, when we refuse to do the work. And I just pray, I just pray that the light and love of your light will continue to rise above the energies of indifference and hate. And we will just continue to rise in love for one another, knowing, knowing that we are all here on our own individual journey. And no one person's journey is right or wrong. It's our individual journey. And we have to learn our own experiences. Experiences are our greatest teacher. And we're never going to learn if we don't experience anything in this life. So many of us are, are so afraid of being condemned to hell that we don't want to live our lives because we're afraid of what other people are going to say, what other people are going to think. Never knowing that we are living our lives based upon the guidance of our soul, which is in direct connection with you. We're not living our lives based upon some book that a man gave us and told us was true. We're tuned in, we're tapped in to the ultimate guide, the internal GPS system who knows the way. So if that is that young man's way, then let him go his way. He's telling his story through another form of art in the way that I'm telling my story in this form of art. We all have our own individual talents and gifts and we are wasting them judging someone else's. Condemning someone else for how they choose to live their life because we're afraid to. Because we are afraid of living our lives in its entirety, in its fullness. I thank you. I love you so much. I wouldn't want to do this life with anyone else. Because I know you have my back. You, you always hold me. You constantly hold me. You love me so deeply, so dearly. And I love you all of you, every, every piece of you. I'm grateful and thankful for this journey for finally living boldly and courageously in the light of my authenticity. And that's what it's about. And that's why people are angry and triggered. Because they're not living a life that's authentic to their soul's guidance. And they're sitting by on the sidelines, watching, being envious and jealous of other people who are living their lives in their true authentic light. I pray for those hearts. You know who, who they are. You know exactly who they are. You, they have no reason to hate another person, to be envious of anybody when they too can step out of their own conditioned beliefs and become the healthiest, happiest, and truest version of themselves. I'm grateful. I, I'm grateful that I get to serve in this capacity. And before it was a lot, it was a lot, but you keep me going. You, you give me the strength every single day to know that you have my back. And it doesn't matter who comes against me, who says what, who tries to do whatever. You have my back. 
and I'm led and surrendered by your guidance, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit that lives within me. Doesn't matter what other people think. I live for an audience of one. I'm thankful and grateful for the comments and the likes and the followers and the subscribers and the love that I receive, but nothing and no one will ever compare to your love. I live for you. I live for your love. Because your love pulls me through. Your love is the provider, the protector, the shelter. My knight in shining armor, it's my anchor. It's my confidant, it's my best friend. It's my greatest supporter. It's my greatest healer. And I know you, you use others to help me along my journey. And I'm thankful for those people who have come into my life. I'm thankful for the distractions because they taught me to stay focused. I'm thankful for the words of other people that I resonate with that continue to help me along on my journey. Thank you. I love you. And I'm thankful and grateful and honored to serve other people in this capacity. I am abundantly blessed above all I could ever ask, think, or imagine. And I'm, I'm grateful to be a blessing to others. I'm, I'm grateful to share it, to share what I've learned, the experiences. And I'm not trying to stop anybody from having their own experience. Just trying to show them the way to do it authentically. And that's loving yourself unconditionally beyond anything that you have experienced in your life thus far. So let's rock this day out. Let's get her done. And so be it and so it is. All right, y'all. I thank y'all so very much for joining me today. I want you to go out. Have an awesome, amazing, and beautiful day today. From my heart to yours, as always, namaste.